Every gardener has heard about cardboard mulch. It's the lazy gardener's trick to smother weeds, keep the soil moist, and build organic matter without the backbreaking labor of constant tilling. And manure, whether it's from cows, horses, goats, or chickens, has been the age-old fertilizer of choice, feeding crops for centuries with rich nitrogen and microbial life. But when you combine the two, laying a sheet of manure underneath cardboard mulch, something fascinating happens beneath the soil surface. The transformation isn't just about weed control or fertility, it's about creating an underground engine that shifts the biology of your soil in ways most gardeners never see. All right, so for the next several minutes, we'll go step by step into what truly happens when manure meets cardboard, what microbes and worms do with it, and how this system changes soil structure over the course of weeks and months. If you've ever wondered whether this lazy layer method actually improves soil or just makes a soggy mess, by the end you'll know exactly why it works, what mistakes to avoid, and how to adapt it for your own garden. When you lay down a sheet of cardboard on soil and tuck manure beneath it, you've essentially created two environments. The cardboard becomes an immediate barrier to weeds and grass, blocking light and forcing roots below to stop growing. This alone relieves your crops of competition, but right beneath that cardboard, where the manure rests, another story begins. Fresh manure carries nitrogen, moisture, and a rich population of microbes. As soon as it's laid down and capped by cardboard, it enters a protected zone, shielded from sun, wind, and drying out. The cardboard traps humidity, creating a microclimate where decomposition can accelerate. Within the first week, fungi begin threading through the manure, feeding on cellulose and breaking down tougher fibers. Bacteria multiply, digesting the simpler compounds, and in doing so, they release heat. That warmth, although mild compared to a compost pile, kickstarts the process of humus formation right at the soil surface. By week two or three, the local soil community begins to react. Earthworms are particularly sensitive to the scent of decomposing organic matter, and the manure layer becomes a magnet for them. They tunnel upward, chewing through softened cardboard in places or finding gaps at the edges. Once they reach the manure, they feed, ingesting both organic matter and microbial biomass. What's most interesting is how worms interact with the cardboard itself. As moisture keeps the cardboard pliable, worms scrape off tiny fragments along with manure, mixing them together in their digestive tracts. When this material passes through their bodies, it emerges as worm castings, tiny nutrient-rich granules loaded with bioavailable minerals. Instead of a flat layer of waste trapped under a sheet, the worms are steadily transporting that manure deeper into the soil profile, depositing castings in tunnels that improve aeration and water infiltration. It's quite fascinating, really. This is when gardeners often start noticing changes on the surface. The cardboard begins to sag as it softens, sometimes showing faint outlines of worm trails underneath. It's a subtle transformation, but one that's important to the process. Above, the crops already benefit because weed pressure has collapsed, soil moisture is holding steady, and roots are exploring a cooler, nutrient-rich zone. It's like a little underground ecosystem working in harmony. By the end of 90 days, the transformation is, well, obvious to anyone who lifts a flap of cardboard. The manure, which was once recognizable, now appears dark, crumbly, and bound with these fungal threads. The cardboard itself isn't stiff anymore, it's partially decomposed, turning into a spongy mat that's flecked with holes where worms and beetles have worked their way through. In soil science terms, you've actually created what's called a transitional horizon a new layer of organic matter that merges right into the mineral soil beneath. The cardboard, instead of just acting as a barrier, becomes food for fungi and cellulose-digesting bacteria. The manure, instead of just leaching away its nutrients, has been slowed down and stabilized, releasing minerals gradually into the soil food web. 
Together, these two materials really do mimic natural forest floors, where fallen leaves and animal droppings create fertile, humus-rich soil without any human intervention. Gardeners who dig a small test hole at this stage usually find more worms than before along with a distinct earthy smell that signals active microbial life. The soil feels softer, more friable, and noticeably darker. The success of layering manure under cardboard lies in how the materials complement each other. Manure alone can be volatile. Left uncovered, nitrogen may escape into the air as ammonia, or heavy rains may wash nutrients away before crops can use them. Cardboard alone is slow to break down, offering good weed suppression but not much fertility in the short term. When paired, the cardboard prevents nutrient loss while moderating the decomposition of manure, making the process controlled and steady. On the microbial level, cardboard provides carbon, the energy source that bacteria and fungi need to process nitrogen-rich manure efficiently. Without enough carbon, manure decomposition can stall or create foul odors. With cardboard, the carbon-to-nitrogen balance improves ensuring decomposition happens aerobically. That means fewer smells, less compaction, and more stable humus formation. Over time, this layered system does more than feed crops for a season. It builds structure. Worm activity creates channels, cardboard fibers mix into aggregates, and manure residues add sticky compounds that bind soil particles. The result is soil that resists erosion, holds more water, and stores nutrients in stable forms that won't leach away at the first rainfall. Another long-term benefit is microbial diversity. Manure brings in gut bacteria and specialized decomposers, while cardboard attracts fungi and cellulose digesters. Together they expand the soil food web, which in turn supports predators like nematodes, beetles, and predatory mites. A richer food web means soil that self-regulates suppressing diseases and supporting stronger plant immunity. This is one reason regenerative farmers are revisiting such techniques. Instead of relying solely on commercial compost or synthetic fertilizer, they are layering raw materials strategically to activate soil processes where they matter most, directly in the root zone. Despite its benefits, manure under cardboard does require care. Using fresh manure from chickens or pigs can release too much nitrogen and create ammonia burn for plants if applied too close to roots. The solution is distance. Apply layers in fall or several weeks before planting, giving time for decomposition to mellow. Another mistake is using glossy or heavily inked cardboard. The chemicals can disrupt soil life rather than support it. Plain brown corrugated cardboard is the safest choice. Finally, excess moisture can turn the layer anaerobic. If the soil is already saturated or poorly drained, the combination of cardboard and manure can trap too much water, leading to foul smells and slow breakdown. In such cases, mixing in dry leaves, straw, or even shredded paper helps balance moisture and keep decomposition aerobic. The appeal of this method lies in its simplicity and effectiveness. It requires no fancy tools, no constant turning, and no manufactured inputs. Yet the results rival some of the most carefully managed compost applications. Within a single season, tired soil begins to act alive again. Crops grow stronger, weeds vanish, and the ground underneath develops the rich structure every gardener craves. What's more, it works almost anywhere, whether in raised beds, orchard rows, or large garden plots. The principles remain the same. Protect, feed, and let soil biology do the heavy lifting. Layering manure under cardboard mulch isn't just a lazy hack. It's a soil-building system rooted in ecology. You know, it takes two waste materials that most people overlook and turns them into an engine of fertility. The cardboard slows and balances decomposition while the manure feeds microbes and worms, and together they transform the soil horizon beneath your feet. 
For gardeners looking to push their harvest higher without synthetic inputs, this method offers an affordable, scalable solution. It is proof that when we align with natural cycles instead of fighting them, the soil responds with abundance. If you found this guide valuable and you're serious about building living soil the easy way, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this video with fellow gardeners. The more people rediscover these practical, low-cost methods, the faster we can all bring life back into our gardens, one cardboard layer at a time.